Hey, in this video I'm going to show how I use GIMP and Python to make the adventure maps for my game in Chesscraft. And that's the map that you see right here. So I took scans of hand-drawn mountains and terrain and buildings like this, and then used GIMP to assemble it, but there's a lot of steps in between. So this was the first time I've actually done a map like this, so the first thing I did was I took a bunch of inspiration pictures from different games like the ones you see here or Lord of the Rings or Warcraft 3 to just sort of see examples of mountains and trees so I didn't have to come up with a style exactly all by myself. I also dropped by the subreddit for map making and looked at examples and tutorial videos. And finally there's a game I used to play a lot called Heroes 3 so you can see a lot of similarities with the obelisks and some of these different places you can visit. So I just bought a few black felt tipped pens and tried them out. And this was actually my first attempt where I was trying a lot of different styles for trees and mountains and buildings to figure out what I wanted to do. And then I just drew a lot of different pages of all components I could imagine needing. Different types of mountains, different types of buildings. So processing this turned out to be pretty complicated, thus the video. So I started with my drawings, I scanned them at work, and then I converted, the, it was a PDF, I had to convert that to a PNG. I had to use GIMP to cut out all of the little components and also get rid of the background paper to make it transparent. That was GIMP. Then I used Python to kind of post-process things and adjust the, the transparency in some cases and sort of apply a general rule to it and also sort all of my pieces by size into this doodad palette. So if I go into mountain, for example, I'll see starting with the tiny mountains and they get bigger and bigger, so it's sorted by Python. And once I had that, I just put them all together with GIMP again. So when I scanned at work, I went with the max 600 dpi, dots per inch, and it was color, of course. Then I used the Linux tool PDF to PPM to convert to a PNG. And in Linux, the command looks like this, though there's, of course, something else in Windows and Mac, I'm sure, to convert PDF to PNG if you have to do that. So let's look at the step now of cutting out all the components in GIMP. So in GIMP, if I open up the image, on the top right, we're going to add a layer mask. This will help us get rid of the background paper that we can see. And what I'm going to do is actually click on the left side of the layer mask. So that's the actual image. I'm going to copy it with Control A, Control C to copy, copy everything. Then click on the layer mask and paste that in there. And instead of a floating selection, we're going to do layer, anchor layer. And what this means is that we have our image, and then we also have a layer mask. And in this case, wherever it's darker, it's more transparent. So I actually want the opposite. So on the top right, we're going to click the layer mask, colors, invert. And now you can see that the paper is transparent and the black is not. But it's pretty fady. So on the top right, we're going to click the left one, the left image, and do colors, brightness, and contrast. Lower the brightness, up the contrast. And I actually take notes. I took notes on exactly how I did this so that it would be exactly the same every time. And I even scanned new images two months later, and I wanted it to have the exact same look, and I was able to do that. So now we're done with the layer mask. So on the top right, right click apply layer mask just to merge them. Now we want to cut out each of these and make their own little image. So with the rectangular select or press R, we're going to cut out really as tightly as we can this image. I'm going to do control X and then control shift V is going to make a whole other image out of it. And so really this process is just finding each one, control X, control shift V, and doing that over and over again. And once we've got them all cut out of this image, all the ones we want anyway, we'll do File, Export as a PNG, 
And I will put these in my pre-processed folder because Python has not processed them yet and I categorize them into a folder. And then you'd press export to create that PNG. So now we're going to have a look at what I use Python for, because if we zoom up on this image, you can see the black is actually a little transparent. Especially if I make a white background, you can really see that it's not even black, it's gray, because it's transparent a bit. So my Python script applied a sigmoid function to all the alpha values, and I don't know how to do that in GIMP, and I didn't really want to look it up, and I knew how to do it in Python, so I, that's what I did. Basically, if you're 50% alpha, half transparent, you'll stay the same. If you're 80%, it's going to push you closer to 1. And if you're below 50, if you're maybe 20%, it's going to push you closer to 0, and it's going to do this smoothly. And that just strengthens the sharpness without really losing the edge alphas. So this script is open source. It's in the video description if you're interested. But it's just going to apply that sigmoid function. It's going to shrink them down to about 50% because I found that was a good size in the editor. It's going to take them from the pre-processed folder and it's going to put them in the post-processed folder. And it's going to sort based on the area of the image. So for example, if I look at my mountains folder and open up the first one, while well, they will gradually get bigger as I scroll through them until they're these giant mountain chains. And this saves me a lot of time because I'm cutting these out and I don't have to name each one or later on I added a couple bigger mountains and I didn't have to insert the names. So this created this useful folder called doodad palette which is what I use to click and drag items into GIMP. And these are all Creative Commons uh, available for use. So in the video description, if you're interested, you can find all these files. Now to get started on the map in GIMP, you can just Google a parchment file, maybe in advanced settings, make sure that it has an open license and maybe the size is large, whoops, not medium, large. You can pick anyone you want, or just find a tutorial for making parchment in GIMP. So let's make a new map in GIMP. File New. Let's go with 1024 by 1024. And here's the parchment that I chose, and I'm going to click and drag that into GIMP. And on the top right, Delete Background. We don't need it anymore. So at this point, I was asking myself if I had any map requirements. And you should ask yourself that too. You know, you might not be able to just draw whatever. If you have a game or a story in mind, you may need to figure that out first before you do the art. And in my case, I needed my map to have different zones that you can unlock as you play the game. So they also have themes. So example, for example, down here, there's sort of a ghost world. There's two ghost-like levels. And to organize this into a map, I just made a little diagram where I highlighted how many of those levels I have for each sort of zone or theme. So I knew that up here I had five levels actually, so I knew this had to be a much bigger part of the map. So once you have a rough idea, it's time to start drawing the coastline. And in the top right, or up here, layer, new layer. We're gonna call this one coastline. And we're gonna choose a black brush and size two, but you could go with maybe size 3, and you might want to write this down so that it's consistent. You may also want to write down the amount of zoom you do, because if you're drawing zoomed up this much, and you zoom out and start drawing again, you kind of are going to have a different style. The amount of waviness you do will change based on how much you're zoomed in. So it's good to just always be zoomed in the same amount. So after staring at maps for quite a while, I felt like I could just start taking a shot at this. I find it's good to take your time and just progress at the same rate. Don't spend too long on a certain spot and don't go too fast because the style of how crooked it is is going to look different. I'll also let go every now and then so that I can control Z if I make a mistake and I don't actually lose everything I did. And we'll also add a little island here. 
So now we're going to want to have it so that the water is tinted blue. So we're going to add a new layer called water. We're going to put it in the middle. So select the water layer and we're going to shift B to get the bucket tool. Click the color and go with something blue. We don't want everything to be blue. So we're going to add a layer mask to the water. And instead of starting at white, we're actually going to make it gray. And on the top right, make sure you click the layer mask on the right. So now it's, you know, we're going to make it a little darker. The darker it is, the more transparent it is. So it's just sort of tinting the parchment, but we don't want to tint the terrain. So on the top, we're going to click coastline, wand select. And now we're going to do a trick where we click on the water. Now you have to be careful with the wand because if I select all the water, even with a high threshold, I'm missing a lot of edge pieces here that it might stay the terrain color. So the trick that I've done here is I select the water and then select the inverse. And now we've really just got the black and the terrain is going to be terrain colored. Now with this selection, we're going to on the top right, click the water layer mask. We're going to choose a black color and the paint bucket again. And we're going to just fill any land that we see. So that looks okay, though I think my blue color is pretty bad. So on the top left, I'm going to click the blue and I'm going to try this again. Now I have to control A to select everything. So let's put on some doodads now. And really as I make my map, I'll just go into here, choose something that I think looks good and drag it into GIMP and repeat. And I actually have two screens open, so I'm going to put these over here but I can still just click and drag whatever I want into GIMP. And now I can press M for the move tool and start moving these around to wherever I might want them to go. So initially I had actually made a bunch of GIMP brushes on the bottom right so that I can do this more as a brush, but I found that it was a little hard to change my mind later on which be, was a problem when I shuffled my map requirements as I built my game. Now we do have a case in the top right here where something's peeking out of the water. It's got a line and a water. So that's easy enough to fix. We're gonna click co coastline. Shift E is erase. Make sure you have a decent brush and a decent size. And we're just gonna erase. Next, we need to go into the water so we're going to click that layer mask, and now we need black. We're going to click P for brush. Make sure we have black on and just draw that terrain color into here as well. Lastly, if you have a desert area, you may want it to be a little red or a forest area. We could make a little green. So for the forest, we could do layer, new layer, forest. We're going to add a layer mask. I'm going to click on the left, fill it with a nice green. And we actually want it to be almost always black so that it's see-through. So click on that layer mask and black, fill that. And now we can do something slightly brighter like a gray and a brush and just apply that green wherever we may want in any kind of way. If you're going to cover the land, you probably don't want it to be this intense. Maybe this could be just the trees. But this seemed like a lot of work, and I wasn't sure if it lo even looks all that great. So I didn't do this, but if you think you have feedback on my map or ideas on how to make it look better, please let me know and maybe it'll make it into the next version. And one last thing I did on my chess craft map is on the top right, I actually have a bunch of layers. So I can selectively hide certain things if I want, which help me categorize and work with the map. And these are layer groups, which is easy enough to do. You just right click, new layer group. We might call this one forest. And here I could put all of my candle trees, named because they kind of look like candles. So 
So this was a good approach for me because I could actually draw anywhere like on an airplane. I hope the video was helpful. Uh, you can download GIMP for free, of course, and of, of course, I highly recommend it. There's links in the video description for all of these assets if you want to use them in any way. Let me know if you have ideas for a next video. And finally, the full version of Chesscraft is free to play, so check it out, and thanks for watching.